Hi, this is Jeff Bowett, Technical Agronomist with Cooperative Farmers Elevator, and we're back for the 2022 season of our Field Friday segments. Um, we're kind of getting to the end of our corn spraying season, and you know, we've kind of, a lot of the issues we've had questions on, or I've had questions on, we've kind of grown through, but I thought I'd touch on uh, something we've seen a fair amount of this year. And then we'll talk about soybean spraying, which we're just getting into now, and some of the things that we're dealing with. Um, earlier on, right after Memorial Day, when we kind of started spraying, most of our herbicide combinations we're using today have a mesotrienone uh, active ingredient, uh, something like the incinerator Callisto uh, type products. A lot of the premixes have that in as well. But when we sprayed right after Memorial Day, we had some cool cloudy days. And when that happens, that corn's growing a lot slower. Uh, the weeds are as well. But it doesn't metab the corn doesn't metabolize that active ingredient as rapidly. So we run into some of this, you know, kind of it's, it's a little bit of a yellow or a white flash on those leaves uh, you see on the corn. Um, it's kind of really makes it look weird, especially on overlaps. Um, we have a little less of that today with the machinery, with the shutoffs and whatnot, but there's still a lot of sprayers we're manually shutting stuff off. So we see some white bands around uh, field edges and stuff where we're overlapping on the end rows. But even some of the fields, just with a normal rate, we've seen some white flash. There are differences in how genetics handle it. And then of course, you know, what's the weather exactly like right before and right after application. But you can see these this is an overlap. This corn did slow down a little bit. It is a little bit shorter than the surrounding area. It's growing through it fine, really shouldn't have a whole lot of impact. But when we have cool cloudy days, it's just a metabolism thing. It takes that plant longer to do that. After we got through those few days that we started spraying, we had rapid growth. I don't really see any of that stuff showing up on later applications, even on overlaps, so I think we're good there. But Mother Nature still has impacts on what we're doing, and that's just something we have to deal with. Um, we're getting into soybean spraying now, and with the weather we've had and the forecast, you know, we've got a lot of 90s in the forecast. We've been through some, even up to 100 degree days here. Um, that becomes dicey. Um, we're dealing with a lot of these soybean mixes. Obviously, our main target weed is always water hemp, and that's a tough one, obviously. We've got a lot of extend beans that we're, you know, we're basically have to be done spraying those about the time uh, this weekend gets here and you know, there isn't as many acres of that around. But the Enlist beans, the Liberty beans, and, and any other uh, uh, herbicide combinations we're using, we gotta think about what this weather is like. When we get hot, dry weather, we get into this 100 degree, 95 degree, or anything 90 and above. If we've got dry air, south winds, there isn't a lot of humidity, these leaves, and not so much on corn because we're going to hopefully be done with that, but beans are doing the same thing as weeds are. They're putting more layers of wax on their leaf surface to try and preserve the moisture that's in those uh, plants. It doesn't sweat out or transpires what the plants are doing uh, to cool themselves. So it's kind of a protection mechanism. When that happens, we're trying to kill these weeds. We need to get that herbicide into that plant through the leaves and if it's got a heavier wax coating on we need more surfactants to do that. When we do that there is a risk of some more crop injury as well. We're always adding some residuals to the tank just to try and stay ahead of the water hemp. A lot of those residuals are of an EC formulation and ECs act like a crop oil. That is something that helps penetrate that waxy surface but it also can give us some speckling and even some leaf burn even though we have herbicide tolerant crops and, and that's just a symptom of what we have for weather. We also, we need that oil effect with all our volunteer corn killers. And yeah, you drive around, there's a lot more volunteer corn to deal with this year. So even though we have Liberty Tolerant or 2,4-D Tolerant, the Enlist beans, we still could see some crop response this year. Matter of fact, I expect it. And it's mostly a cosmetic. It's burning the leaves. It's not going into the system of the plant. It'll be fine but we're gonna have more of that until we get this weather to get back to more normal conditions. So to me, we're gonna have more response when it's humid versus when it's hot. When it's hot and humid, of course it's worse, but the humidity, you have less wax on the surface of the leaf. There's humidity around, there's moisture around. It's not worried about losing as much in that plant's growth. So the weeds are the same way, which is good, but we're gonna have all of these weather conditions happening here very quickly. So. Just be aware, we're gonna have some of this stuff show up. We're gonna burn some beans. 
we have to do that to try and kill weeds if we're spraying in these conditions. And the forecast is for it to stay above normal temperatures through the rest of June. So we might have this through the whole soybean spraying season. So just be aware of what you might see. It really shouldn't have much for major impact, but be aware you might have some burnt beans. So with that, that's this week's Field Friday segment, and we'll see you next week.